What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and this is a vacuum cleaner. This is the motor to a vacuum cleaner. This is a switch to a vacuum cleaner. Notice the problem. This is a cord to a vacuum cleaner. To be more specific, this is a Bissell Power Force bagged seventeen thirty nine which seems awfully familiar and this one I got uh, I didn't do a video on it initially whenever I got it but now that I know it's worth something I'm doing a video on it now um, I should have probably filmed it whenever I initially got it to turn on but I got it it was in my dumpster and, uh, or like the uh, dumpster for the sort of whole general area, like neighborhood, so to speak. And, uh, someone had stuck it in there. It was really dirty. So I took it home. I, uh, completely stripped it down to the motor. The cord was cut. So the cord was completely chopped off right at the entrance point. Someone had, had, uh, cut the cord off, presumably to scrap it for copper, which is ridiculous because the amount of copper you get from... A 23 foot vacuum cord is pretty negligible, but I guess uh, desperate times call for desperate measures, huh? Even though you probably could have just, you could have sold the vacuum for a at least a couple dollars more than had you got the, whatever, that's not the point. So, um, I completely tore it apart, and in the, in the process of me drying, I left it out for like an extra week, just sitting with all the parts, so it's gotten a little bit dusty again from sitting, but... Nah, whatever, it'll be fine. So, um, this is the motor. It does run. It sounds normal. It doesn't It doesn't have weird motor syndrome or anything. It's not extra loud. Um, so, you know, the motor shaft isn't rusted or anything. It seems fine. It doesn't really seem... I mean, it looks kind of off, but it, it's fine. So, I did test it. The issue is, is that whenever I attach the wires, I attached it outside... Right, I had this just sitting in here, and of course, I didn't run the cord through the actual hook in the back of the machine, so I couldn't put it back together. So I pulled it apart again, and of course, once you get the copper exposed, you basically just burn off the uh, these little cables, and my dad helped me out with that. So basically, you just burn these off, and you can pull the little little case off, and then you have access to the straight copper, and at that point... You know, you can just attach a, I use, you know, wrap it in some electrical tape to make it conductive and then just screw on one of these screw caps and that caps it off so that we can actually bridge the connection and get it working. And, you know, th this is the white wire. This is the black wire. Pretty self-explanatory from that, from that perspective. This will focus. Doesn't seem to want to. But yeah, so we're just going to, and as you see, I already took the excess cable, the, one that, the little bit of cable that was cut. Some of these screws are a bit rusted, so it's not going to be the prettiest thing in the world. But I'm just going to take this and set this down for a sec. So just take this cable, and of course with the copper, we don't want to screw it up. Don't want to break any of these little wires, so I'll kind of twist them so they go through. Ooh, that's sharp. And just feed them through this back section. And it's pretty self explanatory. Just like that. That's the filter for that, by the way. Which that isn't mine. I haven't done a video on that, but that's. A friend of mine's vacuum that I still haven't properly fixed yet. Let's see. Dust cups right there. Oh, uh, yeah. So, now we got to bend it around this little hook right here, which is basically just a brace to help it. So, if you tug on the cord, it doesn't rip it out of the vacuum or anything. So, we are going to lose a little bit of length, unfortunately. 
So what was a 23 foot cord, because this cord came off the Power Force Helix that got smashed. And I'll need to kind of do this right so there's the correct amount of space here. It's kind of just a guessing game. There we go. Just kind of jam that in there. And the cable's going to want to pop out, so you just got to kind of push it. I'm going to have to bend that cable so it fits in there like that. Push it down in there and still trying to pop out but I can force that in later. For now, we try to, and again that's wanting to push back up, we can try to f feed these wires and try to attach them. And it's pretty self-explanatory, like I said, just attach the wires twist the copper together, you know, so they're actually intertwined, electrical tape them off with a little bit of electrical tape, and then screw the cap on the end. And so I'll do that real quick. It's, again, it's kind of hard to show that. All right, so I got this little section with the cap, with, you know, managed to get that whole cap mechanism squished in there and the cable secured. So I'm going to put this top cover on and see if this thing still powers on or not. So it does indeed run, although I noticed that I forgot to put the post motor filter back in. By the way, for those wondering, the post motor filter on the Bagged Power Force 1739, the newest one that you can buy, is not user accessible. It has these three little notches that you just put over the exhaust. And yeah, they're the only way that you can clean this is if you pull the base off, which requires several screws, and then you have to undo four screws to pull this off. And the motor's right there and then you can get access to the post motor filter. So it's not like the older versions where you just have a little door that you can just pop open and replace it. So this is washable though, even though they obviously don't advertise it because of the fact that they don't want you to access it all. This is the same material as the older filter as well as the pre-motor filter. So if you do take this out, you can indeed wash it. There's no harm in washing it. And I would recommend, if you want this thing to be in good shape, I would say, um, if you're using really, really poor quality bags, I would say pull this apart and clean this maybe every two years. And if you're using really high quality HEPA bags, then you shouldn't really ever need to clean this. It should never really get dirty to the point uh, where you know, where you would actually impede any sort of airflow. Obviously, this is the exhaust filter, so suction isn't really a concern. It's more so just, could you be overheating the motor by forcing it to push through a filter that's clogged and restricting the outward airflow? But yeah, and then of course, the pre-motor filter right here has this little notch in it. And as you can see right there, it just slides right there. So, pretty self-explanatory. And then, of course, once you get this post motor filter on, starting from the top where the back doors are, you kind of line this up, press it in, and then push it on like that. Then there's screw here, screw here, screw here, screw here on the back of this. And then that, that's all together. Now that this is all back together, we got the base. So we can just set this down on here, just like that and put these two side pieces on. In addition to that, there is a suction release valve, which is right here. So this little filter slides into the slot right here against the suction release valve. 
and then just take these two little two two little bracket pieces on either side slide them on just like that two screws and in the case of this one also again forward first because there's a couple notches so forward first and then make sure you line this up correctly there we go sit flush and then two more screws actually before you do that well I never said this is a tutorial so don't get mad at me you gotta take the lower hose and reattach it to the base <laughs> that's a pretty important step that might be uh, pretty important later on base is attached with those four screws the Suction release filter, suction relief valve filter is in there as well. And I also attached the lower hose with just a simple screw. One thing I like about Bissell vacuums, almost all the screws, except for these, are the same type of screws. So you don't have to worry about mixing them up, and they're super easy to replace. This is super light, even with the motor in it. So next, we attach the height adjustment, and we put in the belt brush roll and the height adjustment knob, and then secure all of that on with the base plate. One interesting thing is that this is the brush roll from the Power Force Helix when they got destroyed, and the bearings on this brush roll are kind of, they're okay, I mean, they're passable. I mean, this is still definitely a usable brush roll. It's a little bit, it's a little bit squirrely. It's not ideal, but it definitely is, you, you can see it's defi it definitely spins good. It's definitely usable. You can see just other than that little like noise that it makes. Perfectly serviceable brush roll. However, this is the one from this machine. And this is buttery smooth. Like, I expected this brush roll to be shot, but this brush roll is perfect. This is basically a brand new brush roll functionality-wise. The bearings are perfect. It just glides super easily. There's no complaints with this brush roll. So this is the one that was in this. So we'll definitely put this back in this because it does seem to be a very, very nicely working brush roll. And the interesting thing is that the original belt too, it, the, the original belt, it still has tension. Like I had to stretch the brush roll onto the um, housing. It still has tension. It still seems to have decent torque like I legitimately have some machines that I purchased new and that that are not do not run as smoothly as this does which is bizarre but yeah so when I put the uh, height adjustment knob from the power force helix as a little reminder of where the cord from this machine came from so put on the height adjustment wheels Apparently that didn't get clean. And put these sole plate back on. Next, I installed the carrying handle, which is just four screws right up top here. Next, screw in this bracket with these two screws, and then put on the handle and put on the two screws on there as well. Finally, with the last two steps, take the hose, slide it in and twist it to there we go lock it in place of course all the hair decides to stick all the hair that I pulled out of the brush roll decides to stick to the hose which is annoying there we go and I just dropped the hose right on all the hair again Whatever, okay. Put that right there. Except this doesn't have a swivel neck, so I have to manually turn it to get the stupid thing to adjust properly, which is annoying. Snap that up on the hook right there. Move all this hair out of the way from the brush. There we go, and then finally, grab a bag, in this case it's a slightly used one, which is fine, and install it on the collar. There we 
go. There we go. Bags installed. And finally grab the bag door and snap it in place. There we go. So that's my repaired Bissell Power Force. And uh, let's try this thing. And let's try this. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> so, because I managed to fix the cord on it, because, because I got this um, out of my dumpster, obviously cleaned it up, so it is clean. Don't worry, it's not it's not disgusting or anything. I didn't bring it in, I didn't use it in its then state. But from basically the vacuum completely for free, the cord from another power force that I got completely for free, not replacing the original belt, not replacing the, well, I did replace, it didn't have a bag in it, but I used a bag I already had, so I didn't spend any money on bags. I literally spent zero dollars on this. Zero. Zero. Completely 100% free. And it works, it works like a brand new machine. A lot of the, some of the screws are rusted. And uh, there's a lot of scratches on the front of it. And obviously, because of having to replace the cord, the cord is a little bit shorter than the... Uh, even though it came from a Power Force Helix, which has the same 23-foot cord as the Power Force bagged, because I had to cut off some of the cord to reattach it to, you know, um, recap it off inside the switch mechanism, I did lose a little bit of cord length. So this is actually probably closer to a you know to a 22 foot cord instead of a 23 foot cord maybe even 21 and a half but besides that and it missing the attachments it's a brand new vacuum functionality wise fun functionality going based purely off functionality not based off not based off aesthetics it's a brand new vacuum it's identical to that one same model 1739 100% free and the motor sounds good too. It's not it doesn't have weird motor syndrome. You heard it. It sounds just like my brand new one. So surprisingly, there was no issues with the motor itself. Just the cord was chopped off, which is weird. I'm assuming. I'm um, my guess is, is that someone threw it away, and for some reason there's a lot of there's a lot of undesirable people who like to go through our dumpster and like to go through our trash, which is illegal by the way, because a lot of them will try to fish out mail. But um, either way, there's a lot of undesirable people who will try to sift through our trash. And instead of them taking the vacuum, I'm assuming they just grabbed a pocket knife out of their jacket and uh, chopped the cord off, presumably to scrap it for copper. Since that's the only reason why you really chop a cord off. Unless maybe they had something they needed to use it for. So that's interesting. So I learned, I learned how to actually, with the help of my dad, I learned how to actually re-solder on a cord well not solder but reattach a cord and i got a free vacuum a 100 percent free vacuum i put zero dollars 
of anything into this. I didn't buy a belt. I didn't buy a bag for it. It's completely 100% free. And uh, that means that whatever I sell this for is 100% profit. So that is good. So I'm happy about that. And uh, can't go wrong with that. So yeah, that's the Bissell Power Force bag, 1739. My second one that I currently own. And the third one that I've ever owned. Because the other one was in a video. That one I did uh, sell off. So, yeah, and of course I got the height adjustment knob from the Power Force Helix 17, uh, 1700U. So that's a little reminder to know the cord came from a different machine, which I thought was kind of cool. It's a fa fancy little Easter egg. Plus, blue and orange are my favorite colors. So this is perfect. This is really nice. So it's mostly blue, but it has that little orange accent, which I really like. So that's kind of cool. But yeah. So that's the Power Force Helix, or no, Power Force Bagged, not Helix. That's the Power Force Helix. This is the Power Force Bag. Don't have any attachments at uh, for it. Well, didn't come with any, I should say. But I think I have somewhere. Oops, I just stepped on one. I thought I would have. I thought I had a set of attachments. I had a dusting brush. I have no idea where I put it. It, it was white. Oh no, here it is. I have a dusting brush for it. If I can put this on here. So I have a dusting brush for it. And I think, one sec. So this one is a 2017 model, made on the 263rd day of 2017. Of course, it's an 8-amp an, uh, version, just like all the other ones of this style. And, uh, yeah. So it works perfectly, in fact. Which is, uh... Good. So, yeah. This is the Bissell Power Force bagged. Uh, had the cord chopped off of it. Pulled the cord off a of Power Force Helix as well as the height adjustment knob and dusting brush. And, uh, and the other extension wand crevice tool. Not sure what those came from. But uh, yeah. So that's working and works good. So yeah, I got the entire thing for completely free. Can't complain about that. And... Uh, Happy to get it working, so that's really nice. It's nice that I was able to take a, I was able to take two dead vacuums and turn it into one that works perfectly, and then another one that was, well, disposable, but uh, got got a, some uh, entertainment out of it. So yeah, that's the Power Force bagged 1739, up and running, and uh, repair. So that's good. So definitely happy to see that working so that's definitely very nice anyways this is intel tech studios i'll see you guys in the next video and i hope you all have a good one